I don't live my life the way you live yours. I want to live my, my way. You guys are way too, too controlling, and I want to raise my children so they, my children have a lot more options that other children should have. I think time helped. Time for me to realize it. Time for, for me to accept the quote-unquote truth. Take a girl and a guy, and they fall madly in love and form a family. Sprinkle in some counseling degrees and a doctorate, a dream of transforming relationships as we know it. And 20 years later, we give you power couple Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. And this is their podcast, Couples Synergy. Welcome back to another episode of Couples Synergy with Dr. Ray and Jean. I'm Dr. Ray. And I'm Jean. And this is our podcast about love, marriage, and relationships. Check us out online at couplesynergy.com and be sure to subscribe to our podcast or send us any suggestions on topics you'd like to hear more about. And now on to Couples Synergy, an in-depth look at love, marriage, and relationships, where we bring you our experiences working with thousands of couples for over 15 years. You know, every day we get to hear intimate details about a couple's celebrations, disappointments and everyday challenges. We've often wished these stories were shared because we know we are more similar than different. So we've created not only an avenue where you can hear about people's intimate lives, but an atmosphere where people come over to our home pub, pour a drink and share their stories. People like today's guests, Steve and Marnie, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. Welcome. Welcome. (laughs) Our pleasure. It's awesome to see you guys. It's been kind of quite a while since we've seen you. Yeah. Yeah. Couple years. Couple couple years now, has it been? Couple yeah. years? Year and a half. Since the wedding. Since the wedding. Yeah. All yeah. right. And how do you know these people? Well, Marnie's my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we start for those listening with how old are you guys? What do you do for a living? And how long have you been together? I'll go first. I am Fifty-two. You, you had to be <laughs> reminded of how old you are. Once you hit fifty, it gets blurry. I'm fifty-one or fifty-two. I'm, f- I'm, I'm forty-seven. <laughs> We've been married for twenty-eight years, one month, and one day. No, wow, twenty-eight years, one week, and one day. Yeah, down to the day. He yeah. knows the numbers. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, he knows how old you are too. Right? Yes. <laughs> he keeps track for you. <laughs> he does pretty much keep track. Sch- of schedules everything. too. Yeah. <laughs> schedules everything. Bills, all these things. I do everything. <laughs> So, and what do you guys do for a living? I do promotions and I do makeup. Awesome. Uh, electrical engineer for a lighting company. Okay, in great. Wisconsin. And can you guys tell us the story of how you met? Your version, and I'll tell my version. Okay, this is what happened. So, uh, I have an older sister. They worked together at Leo Burnett down in the 35 West Wacker in Chicago. And my sister had this very overbearing husband, her first husband, Egon. It's a code name for his real name. So, they went out drinking one night and. Marnie brought my sister back to my parents' house where I was, I was 18. So I was hanging out with my friend watching Faces of Death. And we were just hanging out, stuff like that. And then I had to take her. She couldn't find how to get back to the expressway because at the time she was living with her aunt, not aunt, aunt, <laughs> over in uh, Downers Grove. So I had to show how to get back to 94. It was before they built an interchange on Route 6 for 294. So I had to go up to, to like Crestwood, Alice area, way down there. I showed her my job, stuff like that. And then... She gave as she gave me her phone number, and then the following few days later, she shows up at my house to go show her my fireworks. That's basically what happened. That you no, cannot no, 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 no. deny that. I, <laughs> it's abbreviated. <laughs> I actually was trying to find Danny. True story, your sister, <laughs> and I knew where I dropped her off, which was at your mom and dad's house. You still got lost. So I though. kind of yes, I get lost easily. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> Numbers and directions. Okay. So so I stopped at a, a payphone and I called and I asked for Danny. And so they told me how to get there and I got there, but I was there for Danny. You shot off but all you were my there. fireworks. So <laughs> so you were 18 and how old were you? I was 22. Three. <laughs> Two. Three. We got married when I was 23. 24. Oh, Okay. <laughs> So 23 and 18. Just turn 18. Young 18. Just turn 18. Yeah. I okay. had a job at Coca-Cola Bali plant working on the line. I hate smell of Coke right now. So what happens after you guys meet that day? He goes to the store with his best friend, Rasan, and they come back with videos. So we it was a decide- store. It, well, you were, we were already got the videos before you got there. We were going to go pick up uh, oh. Faces of Death because we were young. <laughs> yes, it was Faces uh, of Death, and we watched it in his room. Faces of Death 3. And- 
Okay. I was recording. So I was, we were I was all it. watching it. So it was kind of scary and gruesome and, and whatnot. So he kept coming behind me going, Bruh. you know, <laughs> kind of totally with his fingers kind of going by my ribs, scaring me or trying to scare me. And I wasn't getting scared, but I was getting really annoyed and pissed. <laughs> <laughs> so I would turn and would punch him. And I, didn't, I don't punch like a girl. So I, you know, with momentum and weight and everything. I punch it, him, it and it was love from there. It was <laughs> love from there. He loved it because I was the one that that fought back. Apparently, he had a record of doing this to older sister's friends. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes, I was told that. So, so <laughs> I did date two of the other ones before. Were you Were you flirting? <laughs> of course, I was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I wasn't. I was just punching him because he was being annoying. <laughs> I let it go after I dropped her off at the thing. I let it go. And then she gave me her phone number. She called me and I didn't because I was at work and we had a payphone at my job and I couldn't use payphones too well. Still can't. Oh, yeah. That was, was before that the, the day. <clears throat> was months. that the time that you, I followed you? Yeah. Right, that was right after you, you gave me the phone number after you followed me to uh, Dunkin' Donuts. 127th and Cicero Interchange. And you still got lost. So you get I did. Off, yeah, you I were, did. You were in Indiana. Like, just take the exit there and go around. The wrong way. I showed her where my job was. I used to work right around the corner at this Coke plant. I still can't smell the Coke. The smell of Coke still drives me nuts. <laughs> and then over to, uh, over to, we switched cars. She, she drove my car. I couldn't drive hers at the time. She wouldn't let me. She drove my uh, 1984 Dodge Charger Shelby, non-turbo. Ooh. Five was it a stick? stick? Five-speed stick. That's why I wanted to drive it. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was stick. Because it was a cool car. That car was a piece So of we car. went in this car and we were talking for a while and I drove it. It was fun. We drove through Robbins, the hood. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so did you guys go on a date or did you just hang out? No, that was that, that was at night. I had to go to work the next morning. And then I came up with us like, how long does it take you to go? It, that's, that's a 20 minutes, a 15 minute drive. Why were you going an hour? Mm-hmm. We were mm-hmm. talking. We yeah. were talking in the then car. The, that's, that was like on a Wednesday. That Friday she came by just to go f- find my sister. But then uh, <laughs> I had, because in Illinois, fireworks are illegal, and I had friends who went across the border before I do it myself to go purchase my contraband. So I was outside shooting a bottle rocket. She came by and shut everything off. Then we went to go play high ball at Sluggers in Orland Park, it's basketball and trampoline. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm going to my shoulder at a couple years before. And then we went go-karting. After that. So I came back home and of course got in trouble for not telling my parents where I went. Like we told dad, we all, like, we all told his father. I don't remember. So that was it. She, we made her just for 4th of July. And that was to go to Chicago with my sister and her first husband. And we were there for how long until Joe wanted to go home? 30 minutes. Maybe. <laughs> and then we yeah. walked in. Then I walked, we walked back from. From the Grant, taste to the 31st street. 31st street. Yeah, the 32nd long and that Giles. Is. We walked back. And part of the way I'd carried her on my shoulders but back part of the way. He yeah. offered. She asked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then after that we went this actually was our mm-hmm. official first date, not the one when she kinda of showed up at my house, but actually the first planned date. And then after that, Danny we all went back home. So Danny and Joe, we all drove because we had one car. We took my little cousin Tommy with us. So after that we went to a water park that was on the Calsag Canal. We all were up there. In the Crestwood area. Uh-huh. We went there. That was actually our official first date. So that was it. It's a pretty eventful first date. Yeah. <laughs> We're not very boring. So how does the relationship pro- progress after that, after that first date? We would just do fun stuff. It was different from all my other boyfriends. We, My other boyfriends were trying to be mature and going to dinner, dancing movies, dinner, dancing movies, dinner, dancing movies, They're like over and over and over again because, you know, they were trying to be mature. And- yeah. I was 18. Um, I couldn't go anywhere. Everything right. was illegal for me. Yeah, right. so I had fun. Right. We did the fun stuff and it was fun for me. And, you know, even though I was older, my age mentally was probably younger than his. So <laughs> even as, as we're younger, as we were older, we still don't go dancing because I don't like, cl- she got me in my first club when I was 18. She got me into uh, Excalibur. Okay. Like maybe we're, we were like, like October or something like that. Yeah. Like right after that. And she got me in Excalibur. I'm like, this is, you guys are really good on this. This is kind of boring dark and loud <laughs> but like i mean you knew that you know what kind of upbringing i had i wasn't able to do much of anything so so me l- leaving the house and being on my own and do my own stuff it was like i was liberated i was doing mm-hmm. all sorts of fun stuff on my own and so that was fun for me and i was a kid again i was allowed to be a kid again even though i was like already an adult by age I mean, age was not an issue for you guys because you kind of were at this place of 
finding freedom, right? And you were like the facilitator of this. <laughs> we had the same upbringing though, but my parents were more lax with me than huh. with my sister. So I would, I didn't try to do things that really outlandish like my sister would try to do. Mm -hmm. I would do things that were, I am kind of pushing the barrier. Just, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Okay. But some of the things that I could do, she couldn't. Like I wasn't allowed to have friends that were outside the religion. She wasn't. So I would hang out with my friends and stuff like that. And then. what religion are you guys talking about? Jehovah's Witness. So you're oh, both. We were both, yeah. both racist. I wasn't yeah. allowed to have friends outside. I wasn't allowed to, even friends inside. They weren't, they weren't really like that. Oh, uh, okay with me going, going out with them. You know, I remember this one time that I was with a bunch of like what we call pioneers, like really devoted, devoted, devoted witnesses. Mm -hmm. They wanted to go out to the city and go have pizza and just kind of, you know, do fun stuff and go to the movies and what, whatnot. And so my parents, they wanted me to come home right away. I'm like, but I'm with them. And they drove me. So they're going to drive me all the way to Mandalay from Chicago right now because just because you say so. And it's already times. So I couldn't. <laughs> So I was very, very much sheltered. So I didn't know a lot of stuff. So when I was on my own, I was discovering things and having fun. And, you know, I was naive. And so, yeah. And similar for you? I had a little more freedom than she did. Like, yeah. I couldn't do the extracurricular activities that I wanted to do. So for one year, my parents decided to, like, fall away from that. I was able to have a lot more freedom. That's pretty cool. I can do this. This is pretty neat. I like this. <laughs> yeah. And I couldn't even, like, hang out with you guys because you guys were not a same religion. Right. So I didn't right, know you guys. So I was raised Catholic. Yeah. So yeah. I started. Yeah. Even if your parents you are staying at his parents' house, yeah. they'll leave if, if we just get together for dinner. They'll leave. Really? Yeah. yeah. Truly? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We could do this. <laughs> <laughs> what what ethnicities are you guys? Filipina. And? Your dad's half. No, he's quarter, quarter? I think. I thought it was half a Chinese, quarter. but. Yeah. It's like your mother. Yeah, the it's blood is there, quarter. but we never yeah, really quarter, like quarter acknowledged mm -hmm. and and celebrated that the Chinese side. Mm -hmm, it right. was just Filipino. Yeah, my mother's black. My father's white from Iowa. Okay, Iowa white. But both you were both raised Jehovah's Witness. Mm -hmm. now, did you guys go to the same church? Is it called? It's no. called church. Yeah, no. right? it was an organized religion, and it's kind of like like a corporation with a with a headquarters in New York, mm -hmm. same thing here, the headquarters in New York, and they, through publications like Watchtower and Awake, they brought down like the rules and regulations and what you should do, and then they, they controlled how people acted and thought. It's actually like a, it's actually a publishing company. It is it, actually a publishing legally a, a publishing, publishing company. company, not a religion. But wow. It's yeah. really? It's, yeah. If you look at their, it's, it's, it's actually a publishing company. They have a How did your thing. parents get into that? Were they raised that also? My mother was raised in it, yeah. Okay. My parents got in in the late 60s when well, they were pushing Armageddon's coming in 1975. And they had this big old push and stuff like that, and everybody joined. And so I was basically born and raised in this. I said all I knew as a child until I started to like, I kind of rebelled when I, was in, when I was a teenager, but I didn't do as bad as most kids do. Mm -hmm. I was more of a, like, real tactics. I would question things and say, okay, all right, yeah, I'll turn 18 soon. So. I wasn't allowed to question anything. I wasn't allowed to show emotions or anger or any kind of anything against it. If any of us did in the hall, that would be like a sign of like rebellion against God and we would be shunned. 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 For emotion. Everything. You don't get talked to. You don't get acknowledged. Nothing. Even if you're like the son or daughter, that's why there's like a lot of like depression mm -hmm. in it. A lot of runaways, a lot of, mm -hmm. it, a lot of killings because they can't handle it anymore. Uh, so, so what are some of the rules? You were saying that you guys grew up under these rules. What are they? Okay. Let's Complete see. Complete devotion to Jehovah. Some of the basic rules. Okay. For children. This is when I basically got out when I was a young adult. So for children was no extracurricular activities. College was shunned. College was not, college wasn't not allowed, but it was, Look down upon. Yeah, going to college because you get yeah. other ideas and it kind of goes against their teachings. Because you know how they have to take like critical thinking classes. Yeah. They don't want people to have critical, critical thinking, thinking because they don't want like them to be woke about the religion. And then uh, what's yeah. another one? They had uh, We can't research the religion. We can't use other publications. If we want to research, we have to use our own publication. But you publication. know how that is. It's them telling us how to think and, mm -hmm. and act. So. No blood was another one. You can have all different parts of blood. You can have 
blood as a whole, which makes yeah. no sense. Like blood as so whatever transfusion blood, or something like that. Yeah, so whatever yeah. makes blood, all the different components of blood, mm-hmm. we can use them by themselves, but we can't use the whole component together as one. How would you use different parts of blood? They can separate blood. Like platelets. Oh, like platelets. Like, okay. Right. Plasma. Uh, remember like about 10, 11 years ago when my son tried to kill me with meningitis? <laughs> that's that's, a, that's a way to he put goes, it. He goes, Dad, I'm sorry. I was like, two. You tried to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> so I had, they gave me, gave me a spinal tap to check for the fluid and stuff in your spine and stuff like that. Well, my hole didn't heal. So they gave me a blood patch. Mm-hmm. Technically, I should be disfellowshipped. If I was still part of the organization, I would be disfellowshipped because that's a blood transfusion because they took my own blood, removed it from my body and put it back in there within 10 seconds. It's still a blood transfusion. So that's wow. not allowed. So, so and that, if you're so, disfellowshipped, you are shunned well, by so, everybody. Do you, know, do you know what the theory is behind that? Why that was a rule? It's, I remember it was a scripture and I forgot what it was. It wasn't so long. I'm going, this makes no sense to me. But then back in the eighties, they got like some kind of, what do they call it? You get, you get like announcement. You, you see we were right when you had the whole thing with, with AIDS and with hepatitis and things like that. They say, see, we said no blood. This is what, this is what if you had blood, this is what you give you a blood transfusion, you get AIDS and stuff like Arthur Ashe died of AIDS from blood transfusion. So the guy who played the first predator, but it was because of, and so in the 80s, they said, well, if you do a blood transfusion, you take the chance of getting AIDS or hepatitis and stuff like that. And so they kind of like reinforce their idea. But if you do proper screening or take your own blood and do it for something else, the problem's not there. What about vaccinations? Vaccination was fine. That's yeah. fine for That's fine. for infants. Yeah. yeah. And this is how bad disfellowshipping and shunning is and this how organized it is. It's not just your immediate family that shuns you. It is also people who are in the same religion in other countries and other other halls in the same area. Case in point, I was talking to a coworker, coworker that lives in a different state in my network for my job. And we were talking about a certain subject and, and religion came up and I was talking about having to be shunned and stuff like that. And so two of them, and I've never met one of them. The one of them I met one time, two of them had mentioned that oh, it was probably because you were a bad, you know, a bad kid or you weren't following the rules or whatever. I'm like, I was the best kid in the world. I did everything. I did not go against or, or offer opinion or anger because I wasn't allowed to. Mm-hmm. I was the best kid for that religion, you know, but this is just like the rules and how it's affected me and why I don't do it anymore. It turns out they both blocked me. Because in the religion, you're supposed to shun anyone that has walked away from it or has been disfellowshipped. I've never been disfellowshipped. I just walked away from it. But from what I was talking about, they figured that I'm not with them, with the program anymore. So they shun me and block me. So. If you talk against <laughs> the religion, they call you an apostate. I have a t-shirt that says apostasy on it. I actually ordered one. <laughs> if you talk about the religion. If you talk down, if you talk, oh. if you talk down about it and try yeah. to like question the teachings and stuff to other people, mm-hmm. they call you an apostate. So technically, a lot of times I would be considered apostate because I've talked her out of it. I talked my sister out of it. I talked her aunt out of it. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, this is like like their whole religion thing is based on two scriptures that have nothing to do with each other. Mm. To pick a date and say, okay, end of day started here. It's going to happen here. And they all kept on saying, well, it's a whole, if they try to make a timeline, it doesn't really exist. And if you, once you figure that out, you think the whole entire thing is kind of a scam. Mm. Do your parents still practice? Oh, yeah. Mm. But see, with the whole shunning thing, my sister's just fellowshipped. My parents don't shun her, though. So a lot of families will still talk to their, their children because, yeah, it's my child. I'm not going to abandon Do they but, talk to you? Yeah. Okay. So I'm in the, a way, they, their would be, person. they would get in trouble if they were found out to be yeah. talking to her. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, they have like rules and stuff. It's like what you're, what you're supposed to do if you have a, a child that is shunned, you're still supposed to love them and provide for them, but you're supposed to like not really associate with them. If they're an adult child, you're supposed to like only talk to them in case of like... If it's a necessity. Necessity. But, you know, I... I told my dad a couple of years ago, dad, let it go. I'm not going back. Let it go. Uh, he, they stopped. But technically, I should have been shunned from that point, but they still rely on me for stuff. I had to go move things. <laughs> Is there like a master list of disfellowship people? Or the headquarters has they it. Actually have really? That. Yes. Yeah, they actually they have keep that. record of that. Wow. They keep record of how many hours each person goes out door to door because they have to report all that. If there is wrongdoing in the congregation, somebody knows about it, they have to be told on, See, tattled also, on. We, we've been away and, for a while. They might have changed some things, but there used to be a master like elders book. There still is. Yeah. They always change it a couple. I've seen an old copy of it. I downloaded it off the internet. It was a PDF file. I was like, this is, this is pretty interesting. All the rules and stuff, how, how to handle people and everything. Uh-huh. Yeah. Someone has a problem. Let's say you have an emotional problem. 
they would rather you talk to them than to talk to a like professional. us. Right. Because uh, they don't <laughs> right. want you to talk to a trained professional because they may see something wrong with this and say, no, maybe you should get away from that mm -hmm. and do this instead. Right. So talking to, uh, if you have a problem with somebody in the Kingdom Hall and have to go seek legal action, they'd rather you not talk to the seek legal action. You've done this before with DCFS. Yeah. They want you to talk to us first. Well, I try talking to you guys. You guys don't respond. So don't DCFS. <laughs> No. They don't want you to talk to the police if any wrongdoings because you're supposed to talk to them first. And this is the process. If you talk to them first, they will form a committee. They will kind of like the court. Mm -hmm. They, mm -hmm. The judge and the court will be three of them in front of one person. That can be very intimidating if you're the victim. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, so but a lot of times in case of rapes, there's a rule that you have to have at least two witnesses. Otherwise, they won't believe you. And as a victim, that's very traumatic. Wow. Yeah. That's yes. one of the things. If you look up the whole thing yeah. with, the, uh, with, uh, with child molestation and the organization, that's one of the things I had a problem with back for years. Mm -hmm. Way back in the section, some court cases about this too. A child will go to the elders about, or the parents will go, this, this person here has been, has been, has molested my child. Well, they all don't go to the authorities. We'll handle this internally. And it'll, where's your two witnesses? Well, we don't do, it's only your word against his. And we have to believe there's no two witnesses. We can't back this up. It'll keep on going on to get more people that say, all right, now we have more people. Now we can do something about it. But they don't, still won't call the police. Wow. Wow. It's been going a couple, couple of things <clears throat> with that. First, the committee people, the three of them, they might not have the education and, and the capacity to handle issues, no matter what the issues are, minor or major. They... Because in the religion, you're not allowed to go to college. So a lot of them that got moved up to like eldership to be uh, qualified to be in one of these committees are not qualified. They could be janitors. They could be retail workers, clerks, whatever. For them to handle issues like rape or murder or even as minor as a rebellious kid, that's like a lot of mental stuff that, that you guys know to deal with. Mm -hmm. They're not equipped. So mm -hmm. all they basically tell them, you got to read more of the Bible. You got to go out door to door more. You got to devote more. That's what, that's what my, my, parents, my sister, my sister eloped with her first husband. My, there was, my mother knew it was going to happen. I was forced to go to the wedding. It was in city hall in Chicago. I was forced to go. Forced to go. I was forced. This was get up. She was getting married. Well, How does this affect me? But was he Jehovah's? Yeah. His dad was an elder too. But they eloped. Is that Against the rules? No, that she's not against the rules. Okay, you can elope because we're going to get married. Okay, fine. But they tried. My mother tried to one of my the elders to talk to my sister and try to like find out what's going on with their head. How can we stop this? My mother didn't like him. A lot of people didn't like him. My aunt came to town and said, I hate this guy, and mm -hmm. with good reason. She judged his character real quick, and she was spot on. They didn't follow up. They kind of like something else happened. So they had to go jump to somebody else's aid instead. One of the elders got robbed and got shot. Was in the hospital. So everybody stopped what they're doing and go focus on his wife. But we have a child. You can't do anything with them. You can give her support, but you have a, a member who's a pioneer whose daughter is rebelling and he needs to need some help. They neglected her, so my parents said, no, I'm done, and kind of walked away. When that happened, I had all this freedom all of a sudden. I could pretty much do what I wanted. Because <laughs> they're focusing on her. I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. You guys are, we're not going anymore. Sweet. Like, uh, can you fill us out? I want to go play baseball. Okay. <laughs> and your parents still. They still practice. are. And actually. And do, they, do they shun you? Oh, they don't talk to me. They don't talk to me. They, they There's a couple of things that they said to relatives that I guess could be hurtful for a normal person, but I kind of like expected already. And I just like, whatever, you know, mm -hmm. the one thing that they said to my cousin Lisa in Seattle, because they were talking about having good relationship with their kids. And my mom was like, oh, I'm so sad because I don't have a good relationship with my daughter, blah, 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 blah. But in the new order, we're going to start over like as if we're disposable. Yeah. You know? In the new order? In the new order. After Armageddon. When After God Armageddon, comes everybody oh. gets destroyed. It's not Jehovah's Witnesses. It sounds like a doomsday cult, doesn't it? Got it. <laughs> kind of sounds so like you start and, over and when the They're going to start over it. with a new family and so, so, you guys one that will be more obedient. Well, my in-laws were here last year, last November. So kind of like to dig in my mother-in-law really badly. I invited my uh, Orlando out to dinner. Just supposed to be me and the boys, me, him, Charles, and that's it. So when he showed up, I had the boys come with me. They haven't seen the boys in like two years. And Trace... Zach's now almost her height, and Trey's looks me in the eye. So, but I was waiting to see if, if her mother would actually kind of call her and say, hey, can I see the boys too? And stuff like that. But she never called. It was like, nope. wow. Not okay. That. So she kind of shunned your kids also. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So I'm like, yeah. you want to see the, uh, you want to, I brought the boys over. And I also invite them. Hey, we're going to, Trey's got a wrestling match 
that you guys want to come by and see. It's not too far because they're staying in Wakanda. The, uh, the match was in Barrington. He's more nicer to them than I am. I'm pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> Initially, though, because you were both Jehovah's, did yeah. your families have issues with your relationship? With me personally? No, because, well, he met someone who's the same religion who put up with them. <laughs> they can't really. <laughs> so your parents were happy. I can't mind They're like, wow. <laughs> Wait, My liked... parents were a little bit skittish about it because. Go ahead, say it. You're a kid. True. <laughs> because of his age. Because of his age, because of him not being a ministerial servant, you know, rank up in the ranks in the religion, about dad not being one. Mine was, an, mine was a pioneer, though. Dad used to be a ministerial servant. Then. Yeah. Transfer congregation didn't want to do it again. Yeah, and my mom was an was a pioneer. Special was a special pioneer. It was a special pioneer. So that was your mother was like, oh, she's a special pioneer. Like, eh, it's just you're going harassing people. So, but yeah, mostly because he was a kid, but I was more kid than he was. So, and and how long between when you guys started dating and got married? One year, ish. One year from the time we met to the time we got married. No, One, no, no. From to, from time we met to time we got married. Was it the, I was basing it on I was basing it on the first Saturday of the of the one year after we had our first date, which was Taste of Chicago. So you're going with July fourth. Yeah. Okay, I'm going with the time we first met was like the 29th of June. Dates and times. <laughs> so a week a week difference. Week and a <laughs> yeah. like year and a week. <laughs> Are you pulling out a calculator? Yes, I'm pulling out a calendar, actually. Oh <laughs> so how did Don't that decision me. get made to get married? Hey, you want to get married? Yeah. <laughs> Basically. That was it. That in was the it. Car. <laughs> You're 19. I was 18. At the time, we were still 18. I, when, I, when I said this, I said, can we get married? Sure. Okay. I We got married. I was, it was my, it was, I was 19 years, one month, 10 days, and 11 minutes when I got married. So, okay. <laughs> so you were 19 and you were 24? Yes. Okay. So why did you decide to get married? Why not? What was it about the other person that you fell in love with? Why not? We got along real nice. <laughs> we had the same, we had the same upbringing. So it was really no, nothing no was, struggle there. No struggles there. So all. we like, figured it wasn't going to be anything that parents would be against, against. Right. Yeah, it was like, know. this right. kind of works out well. Okay. Because as this. Jehovah's Witnesses, all you're allowed to marry is Jehovah's Witnesses. Mm -hmm. That's it. So I was like, this works out. So we get married. Sure. Okay. That and what, was it. what was it about the other person you fell in love with? No. Was I had fun with you, like the other guys. You tolerated me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun dating you. You're never so, home yeah. anymore. I got to be a kid. <laughs> yeah. I got to be myself. Yeah. Annoying as all hell. <laughs> <laughs> and what was it about her? I could be myself, annoying as all hell. No. <laughs> <laughs> So you guys were a match, yeah. match <laughs> yeah. in heaven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would have a video game system. And it wasn't a big thing back then like it is now. You have wives and girlfriends who play video games. But back then, I have a game system. Ooh, I want that game too. And I would have to ask permission, can I play my game system now? Because you've been on it like all day. <laughs> uh, this is right after we got married. We got a uh, Sega Genesis. Yeah. We had our first apartment together yeah. over there. I and beat I, that game Did twice. you guys live together before you got married? <laughs> no. Oh, there's other things about that one. Since she worked at she worked at Leo Leo Burnett, she worked at Excalibur, and she lived in Uptown. My dad's first apartment was right next to across the street from the uh, Aragon Ballroom and that medical facility right there. The apartment right above that that was my dad's first apartment. So my parents knew the neighborhood, and my mother was like, you know what? I don't really like her going home late at night after the club at three o'clock in the morning to that neighborhood. So she got I was a workaholic even back then. She so got a key. I would work my my nine to five, right? Mm -hmm. And I would do a lot of overtime at that office. But then I also took on a second job at Excalibur, which is a bar. And so I would that work club. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, sometimes Sunday, sometimes Wednesdays, but they close at four and I would always work the closing shifts since I worked after work work. Mm -hmm. So I would always work then. And so to come home at three, four in the morning on in Uptown, in Uptown, his mother found out and he's like, here's a key. Come to our house instead. Sleep there. So I would she go to my house. Crash right in the living room right when I got there. Hey, you guys are engaged at this point? No. 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 So you're, you're just dating. We just were, yeah. we were actually officially, we were officially dating. Yeah, we were officially dating, I guess. I yeah. think so, yeah. Yeah. You still had a boyfriend, though. Yeah. Uh, wow. <laughs> Wait, what? <I> was, <laughs> <laughs> you still had a boyfriend, though. My girlfriend had just dumped I, me. I, okay. I, it no was in the beginning me. of a relationship. So and she I had, had a key. this other guy, and, and, 
So we he had, was she, on his way out anyway. So she had so. a key. <laughs> I, I had met her. I was dating somebody else. And then he was more fun. I had found her mother had suspected like, he's seeing somebody else. Her mother was really cool, though. She's like, no, I'm not lying my ass off. Uh, <laughs> so she's like, you have no time for me. I'm breaking up with you. OK, so I, I'm down to one. Cool. <laughs> but she my mother gave her a key and my grandma lived with us also. So she would come to my house like early crack of the dawn. I get up, do my thing. I wake up. She go from the couch from the family room to my room like. Fine, I'm I'm up now. I'll go watch the living room, watch, watch Sports Center because she's sleeping in my bed now. And what also she would do is she would come over with her laundry too and do both of our laundry. So I actually had someone do my laundry for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at your parents' house. Yeah, this is good. This is a good thing. <laughs> no, I paid my rent. <laughs> so we yeah, have so, way of laundry. But I went to school around the corner, so sometimes I had to key to her place. So I would go after school sometimes, and or I some say school got canceled because we had a bomb threat again. So I would go and just go at our house and just crash for the rest of the afternoon because I didn't like, feel like driving from uh, from the north side of Chicago. Actually, at the time, I was taking a train. North side of Chicago all the way down to... Uh, 95th. No, 95th Street. And then from 95th Street, I'd drive my car down to uh, to Markham. I didn't like doing that. So I was going to her, her place and crash and she came to my house anyway. So just stay here. And then we'll just go down there. No big deals. Also, she couldn't park her car in Chicago because there's no place to park in the neighborhood. So she was always at my house. I got her car too. So are there, when, any, when? are there any rules in the church as far as like engagement and how to get married? There's no premarital sex. We broke that a bunch of times. Okay. <laughs> what were they going to do? This fellowship me now? <laughs> 30 years later. Come on now. <laughs> they had, well, they found out that she was crashing on my, because we post, you can't get married in a hall unless you're baptized. They meaning... They basically so, sell your soul to them. Who's they? The organization. What? Aren't they asking the questions? I'm sorry, that hurt. Well, I just wanted to clarify. <laughs> okay, for them. they uh, the organization says that you're supposed to be, you know, you're supposed to marry an, another person who's part of the organization. You can't be part of the organization unless you're married, unless you're just baptized. So, got baptized stuff like that at this. Just assembly. so we can get married, right? Okay. So we get married. We uh, yeah, made that sacrifice for you. I got to get married. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so you were not baptized. No. No, they have to, they will go, you have to go through this whole entire, like, they almost like an inquisition. It sits you in this room, there's these two elders on ranks to you, asking a bunch of questions. There should be a light above you sitting right there. There should be a shock treatment there also. They have to ask you all these questions and stuff. And I have tried also with past boyfriends to get them in so that we can take it further, you know, so, because you, that's what happens a lot when, when the kids date outside of the religion, they usually bring that person in and convert them. Or try to. Because they're not allowed to. To get married to them, right. otherwise, okay. otherwise you'll get shot. But you couldn't get anyone else to convert. Nope. <laughs> I was already there. They were smart. <laughs> so you could elope as long as the person that you're eloping with has been baptized no, no. in the organization. You can elope, no matter what. You can do what you can move anybody you want to. But to get married in the kingdom hall, which everybody wanted us to do, oh, I had to be and that, the place we went to where I had to walk down the aisle and I yeah. said awfully lawfully stuff like that. Yeah, that place. Yeah, yeah. You're at their wedding. I was at the wedding. Well, sisters were in it. <laughs> <laughs> you have no choice. Sugar than I am. <laughs> I'm turning this calendar up. Give you the exact date. I'm like that. I mean, it's not in your brain? It's close. <laughs> I've had a lot of concussions since then. Oh, so we went to the uh, assembly. I got baptized, stuff like that. But one of her coworkers complained that she was always crashing at my parents' house when I was there. And she was a witness. Yeah. So she oh. told one person, she told somebody else, so, who went to our elders and stuff like that and said, well, he's doing, he, well, you guys should, you guys should postpone the wedding. We're not having the kingdom hall. Well, the elders at her hall, no situation. They don't care. Mm. So we basically took what they said and said, my mom's like, well, they can't have in the kingdom hall. Well, no, the elders know a situation up in Northbrook. They said, fine. Oh, okay. Screw them then. Different halls have different personalities. Mm -hmm. Some are like way overboard, you know, o OCD about the well, things. A little self-righteous. Self self-righteous yeah. is the other word. Yeah. And some are a little bit more lax. Like my hall in the, in the whole upper north. Lake County area and all the other halls in the area. Our hall was known to be the bad hall. <laughs> the, the bad the hall? The bad hall because they were more relaxed. So so our teenagers, when I, growing up, we got to do more things, you know, within reason. You know, nothing bad, bad, bad. But, like, we got to get together more. We would have, like, just fun things together as a group more so than they, the they other religions and the other religions. A little bit more than the yeah. other ones, yeah. So we were the bad one. We were known as the bad hall. <laughs> when we were kids, it's actually after I was I was already married. So after I got married, a lot of the different congregations got together and rented out a place to play basketball. 
on Sundays after the hall. We go shoot indoor stuff like that. Well, some of the elders didn't like that because we were grouping together. It was too competitive and things like that. So they kind of put a stop to that as well. Too competitive, meaning competition is something that's looked down upon? Uh, bad. Yes. Yeah, that's be, bad. Yeah, yeah. So you played baseball. I played baseball. I did more. See, I did all the thing I was supposed to do as a teenager. I did in my 20s. So I played baseball through my 20s. I got married, played baseball. I played, I played. And you were, league. you were in the minor league? That's my pro ball. I had some, I had some cool. pro tryouts and go anywhere. But I played one year of little league baseball organized with my parents fell away because of my sister, which was great. Miss that. And then I played everything I was supposed to do as a teenager in my twenties. So I played baseball through my twenties. I was in a circus in my twenties. You were in a circus? I was in a circus. I was a circus like, bat. I, I'll send you a picture. You I was, was the rock. I was, uh, you know what Tito board is? <laughs> no. You know the seesaw with a, with a guy who wants guy in the air? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was the rock. I was a kicker. He wow. was in, I would fall off a cliff. I would jump off a thing and, 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 the other and launch the up. other guy. Yeah. Yeah. There's a video somewhere. I need to see this. I, I have pictures of me at the, in the circus thing. I just picked, and I, this my, is after you guys were married. Yes. This yeah. was 1999. Wow. So are, are there any rules when it comes to work or employment or what you can do and what no, you can't? No military, no police, no working for things that provide stuff for the government. Because I had a job. I, was, I almost got a job working for a company making robots for the U.S. Navy. And my mother was like, well, that's, you know, you can't do that because that's, you know, supporting war. That's a paycheck. I don't care. One this is of, robotics. One of the mm -hmm. ladies at Labor Night where I worked at I happened to work for a creative group. She was an admin. And so one of their accounts is Marlboro. Mm -hmm. So she was working as a secretary for a bunch of account people working on that account. And she would refuse to do work because it's a cigarette company. Mm -hmm. Even it's, though she worked for the agency. Yeah. There was a friend of my mom's. Her daughter married a police officer they didn't get married she was the, the the father was an elder the daughter was just a regular publisher stuff like that people who are normally members are called publishers not member publishers you go to field service yeah. so <laughs> the whole idea was she was gonna she loved this guy stuff like that officer officer wilson he was going to uh she was gonna try to convert him to go become a witness but it required him to quit his job because oh. he couldn't be a police officer that marriage lasted i say a good two years three years and then they got divorced. He got remarried. He was a police chief of Markham, passed away a few years ago. Really cool guy, though. Mm. So you couldn't be a, a mail carrier. You could. Oh, you could. You could be that. But you couldn't be a police officer. You could carry a gun. Mm. Oh. When I was working at Lee Burnett, it was like the start of my discovery of like fun things. So that's when I also started singing and found a band to play with. And when my mom and my play aunt found out I was singing for weddings and stuff like that, they started to like distance themselves mm. because it was singing. I mean, anything of that position where you can possibly be a role model, you know, a, a good singer, which is what I, what I wanted to do as, as a little person, wanted to be like a singer, singer, you know, mm -hmm. like people you see on TV and whatnot. You can't be any of that. You can't be a star. You can't be a, a like rock a, star, a, a, an athlete. Like a figurehead. You well, cannot be any of that there because some, it's idol worship. There are some exceptions oh. who have people who are witnesses that became athletes. You have the, the Williams sisters. They're raised witnesses. There's some old Detroit Tiger players. Lou Whitaker, Chet Lemon, used to be mm -hmm. White Sox too. They were witnesses also. You have some people who are, you know, like Michael Jackson, of course, they were. You have the lead singer from Megadeth. He used to be one also. These people who were. Keyword is used to be. Used to be. To go, go back something. All right, the dates again. Okay, we met on the 27th of June. When you came to my house and got me in trouble it was the 29th. I didn't mean to. <laughs> <laughs> we go karting that. So how far. many how many kids do you guys have? Three. Mm, three. <laughs> how how old were you guys when you became parents? I was 26. 25 and 51. I wasn't 26? Almost. We're close. Okay. <laughs> you, your brother's a week cool. apart. I was not quite 21. And, and, wow. and was yeah. that a planned pregnancy? Or? No. 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 It was neither nor. It's like we, if, we, if it happened, it happened. It's not, if not, then not. We have three kids. The only one that's actually planned was Trey. He was okay. actually planned. I mean, to the doctor, all that fun stuff. We need medication. She's not getting pregnant, blah, 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 blah. He's a planned one. Alex was a, eh, and Zach was a, hmm. <laughs> so how did it feel to be young parents? It's not too bad. You like you, a lot of things that they like you like too. It's really cool. <laughs> we were a kid just like the kids were. <laughs> you go where? Yeah, you know, sweet. We discovered things. We, you know, it was it was 
You're a kid raising kids. It, yeah, we were kid in the head. It's like going to, like going to so, Toys R Us. I miss that place. Toys R Us, and we both go looking for stuff for ourselves. So <laughs> she's in one aisle. Like, Where do you want to go? All right, I'm going to go over here next. Cool. And we go, she'll buy some. She, Alex get something. I'll get something. I, want, I like slot cars. Then. There's a lot so. of things that we've yet to discover and to know about each other, about kids, kids about us. A lot of things we still needed to experience, a lot of things we didn't know, a lot of things we didn't know that we needed to know. <laughs> like the thing with extra activities, doing that with my children, if my parents use the, uh, say, rule well, religion says you can't do this, is a good thing, but that's a lot of time on your schedule because you're basically, all you do now is focus on what they need. Mm -hmm. And if you're coaching, it's even worse. Right. Mm -hmm. And our parents, my parents were still like, had a big influence through the religion with us also. So a lot of that was going on and a lot of arguing about that was going on and so you know kids being kids having kids how many years into your marriage are you guys still dealing with the religion i haven't had dealt with this in the last three i deal I, how meaning like well, at being some point still, you broke away yeah still part of the religion well i yeah. broke away i broke away unofficially when i got married officially i'm like 24 I think I still struggled with it because I was such a good follower mm -hmm. that I think completely cut off, cut off myself from it was uh, we were already in the townhouse. Yeah. Well, I broke away. I was like, I, I, I remember later. celebrating your birthday for the first time. Yeah. I tried right? getting her out. What birthday was that? Oh, that was at the karaoke bar. Mm -hmm. I and remember. I think that I still internally struggled quietly, secretly with that. What birthday that was time. that? Do you remember? I don't yeah, know. I don't remember. Did, I think, did we move up here already? We, we I lived think in this you did house? already, yeah. When we moved up here in 2009. Okay. So somewhere around there. And that was in Gray's Lake. Yeah. yeah. I tried to yeah. get her, I tried to fall, push away, like right after Alex was born, I tried to like, just like fade out. And she kept on like, like a chain. Like I could not get away because she would like not let me like d disappear from this organization right. mm -hmm. so it was mom on me yeah I was that a her. that was a struggle between the two of you then mm -hmm. right? Big one. so yeah. how did how did you guys you know navigate that or i think time helped time for me to realize it time for for me to accept the quote-unquote truth i had to show i showed her one thing and it kind of opened her eyes just before the birthday i showed her one thing in a book i bought this book at the at like i bought it for you Barnes and Noble, the battle book? Yes. Okay. And I showed her something here. Look at this right here. This tells you when Jerusalem fell. They said it happened in 607 BC. That's what the, that's what the organization says. In truth, it happened here. So it means all their dates are off by a lot. She went, Oh, everything's based off of this lie. And based with two scriptures that make no sense, it's based off of a lie. Every she, one of their doctrines. She's like, so, and everything else falls oh. after and that. And like, everything kind of just kind of fell. I'm like, Oh, it took me this long to get you out of this so I can do things that you know, what to do. But there's still that struggle of like knowing that and the feeling that you have mm -hmm. from like still being attached to it and being such a good follower yeah, and being under your parents and the thing about like honoring your parents and the thing about like respecting your elders and all that kind of stuff. What was the benefit for you being a good follower? That everybody was happy with me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that I was a good person. Yeah. Quote, unquote, good person. So um, you had an external way to measure that. Yeah. Did you guys raise your kids in the religion? Nope. Sort of. Alex at first. Alex at first. Her parents, because I but, was still attached. Mm -hmm. But the boys, like the one who's got the most freedom right now, well, Alex started getting a lot, some of the freedom when she was a little older. She was like maybe like 11, 12 and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then we started having problems with her because she turned from this really good child into rebellious Alex. Alex. <laughs> yeah. And that was a lot of like our arguments also was because that was going on. You know? I had to explain mm -hmm. to her that we didn't have the freedoms you have. You want to try this? Go ahead and try it. But you understand, you're telling us, I don't want to do that. Why don't you try it first? Because we didn't have that opportunity. I have a little one now who I can't, I have no free time anymore because he wants to try everything. Every, he's boxing now. If he you lost. Love it. Like, yeah. I love that. He lost again on Friday in Wakanda. He lost again. He was a lot, so much taller than he was. He got, he was so much faster also. But, so you wanted her to have a lot of opportunities, but she didn't want them. Right. Trey is the same way. I'm actually forcing him to wrestle in high school. He's actually doing quite well at it, but he doesn't want to do anything else. Mm -hmm. 
Zach, he has tried wrestling, hates it. Tried for four years. I'm not good at this. I don't like it. It's okay. I won't play football. He plays this is his fifth year playing football. He likes football. He wants to try basketball. As short as he is, he wants to play basketball. <laughs> he likes swimming. He wants to try that one also. But right now he's into boxing and football. Those are his two things. He, I have boxing two days a week until next week. And I have boxing one day a week. And he has football for that four days a week. So I can see why my parents didn't want to do things because this is a lot of time. Mm-hmm. Perfect soccer mom. <laughs> don't say that but but that's interesting <laughs> i mean dad. you know be, that. because of your you know how you're raised and you didn't have those opportunities you want your kids now mm-hmm. to have those opportunities mm-hmm. and to try new things i yeah. told them that you you don't understand you you have a chance to do stuff i couldn't do this stuff you want to yeah. do this go ahead try it no, no, go ahead try it okay and they go out and do their thing and you come back oh, i don't want to do this anymore I don't, I don't have them go one year i don't want to do this anymore after a year no no you're going to try this for a little while because i put money on this stuff this stuff's not cheap like boxing gloves cost sixty five dollars minimum. My headgear costs a hundred bucks. With the USA boxing on the back for fighting, actual sanctioned fights. That stuff's not cheap. You're gonna try this for a while. Did you guys ever have a time in your marriage where either one of you considered walking away? Yeah. 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 What, what happened? I can't find anybody as annoying as he is. <laughs> but why did you consider that? Let's see. You weren't home a lot. Which is yeah, too. a lot of it was work, 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 because I'm yeah. such a workaholic that I thought that the work that I was doing was to the benefit of the family when it was kind of like the opposite and I wasn't seeing that. Um, yeah. So you weren't investing in the relationship anymore? No. I thought I was through work. Look, I'm providing for the family. Mm-hmm. Look, this is all for the family it's to better our situation because we weren't in a good financial situation. Mm-hmm. So I thought the more work, the better financial situation, the more it benefits our family. To me. But you didn't have a direct connection with him during that. I was, no, I wasn't seeing it. This wasn't small. Least. And it was really hard to be take care of two small children by myself with a rebellious child at the same time. Like, this is driving me nuts. I'm really getting tired of this. And I was getting a lot of pushback. But, you know, time heals wounds and you kind of get like, you get kind of almost like accustomed to it. You get more better understanding, she gets better understanding what I got to go through. So when she comes back, she'll help with some stuff. But right now, a lot of the things that I'm doing with the boys, I don't want her involved with because please don't. <laughs> the boys have asked me to say, tell you no. So was it just time that healed it or did you guys have to make some shifts and, and more corrections? Time. There's more time and get some like, are you I doing this? Repetition as well for him voicing things. And it was important for me to also have him understand where I'm coming from, how I'm thinking. And I wasn't getting why he wasn't getting it. My point of view. But maybe it was just all one side and his was all one side and there was like that barrier and we and slowly but surely it was a kind of crumbling down as we got to each other, even through arguments. So as that wall was crumbling down, I was beginning to understand more. So I think he was also beginning to understand me. Mm-hmm. Also, my temper got better as I got older. I used to snap at every little thing. Now it's like, okay, I'll get mad about it. But yelling and screaming doesn't really help. You know, I couldn't like, okay, I'm upset with this. You know what? Not that big of a deal anymore. So you guys kind of created a situation that we call parallel lives, where you're living your life and you're living your life and there's not a lot of intersection. Children. Right? hmm Yeah. And you took on the brunt of the parenting? They're boys. It's easier. <laughs> it's a lot easier. Also, the boys have told me this. Actually, Zach has told me this. What? Do not have mom take me to practice. She is always late. <laughs> She's told me. He has told me that many times. <laughs> Well, that, that's something we call Filipino time, right? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> we have CPT also. <laughs> Mom's always late. Can you please not have her do that anymore? Fine, 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 fine. <laughs> Is your guys different ethnicities? Was that ever an issue for you guys? No. No, because I never saw that. I never <laughs> knew the word racism itself. Mm-hmm. I never... Even like with the LGBT community, there was always, you know, the baklas in, in Filipino. And I mean, it wasn't anything that was celebrated, but it was, it was, a, it wasn't something that was also looked down upon. Maybe a little bit, but it was like no big deal, you know. So I never knew any of that growing up. And, and then when I found out what racism was and what that word is, and there's actually a word for that, I'm like, really? But all my life, I've like, what's that. wrong with you people? That shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> so race is not an issue in the religion either. No. Okay. They, they've, they have, they've had some articles before that were kind of like condescending to people who are black <laughs> back in the you know 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, stuff like that. They were kind of condescending. But in, in the religion itself, in the no religion race, itself, no. no racism at all. But 
of course, there's individuals. And then again, the halls have personalities mm -hmm. as a whole. Your mother. <laughs> yes, I know my family is no. just your racist. Mother. Just your mother. <laughs> just your mother. So what was it like for you growing up half black, half white? In the 19... That was also, I'm oh. sorry, 70s, 80s, right? 70s, 80s, yeah. oh. That was also something I forgot to say earlier, that racism is also, like, it wasn't verbalized clearly, but it was there with me marrying him because he was half black. Mm -hmm. So, forget so, that. So, I grew up in a black neighborhood. We had, when I was growing up, we had one, two, three, four white families, one Hispanic family, and three mixed families. Two mixed families, white and black, one black and Puerto Rican in the whole neighborhood. Okay, we had two people who were, they call them high yellow, red bone, light skin. One of them is a, a NBC personality person, I'm not naming names. And I've got racism. That person's a child. Most people in my neighborhood, because I was black, picked on me. So go to a school that's half white, half black. I get picked on my white kids, too, because I'm half black. I'm picked on by the black kids. I'm half white. picked on by the black kids, you know, back and forth. It, I really had, I had a small circle of friends. You kind of like, okay, fine. I'm, you're going to do your thing. I'll do my thing. I just, I, I had to learn how to run and fight as a child because of it. But, you know, you get over it over, over time. You couldn't, you, you couldn't win. A lot uh, of fights I did win. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> a lot well, of fights I did win. <laughs> Some fights I did. Some fights I did. A lot of fights I did win. But it was just like, when, when, when they get older, a lot of people actually will have kind of apologized because of what they did as a child. Because, you know, that was like. And they didn't know better. Yeah. You just what you, you, you see this, you, this person's different. You pick on them. Did your sister have just as much of that? Yeah. But she, she was more, she had more problems with the black kids in the neighborhood than the white kids. Okay. My sister also kind of passed, uh, when we were young adults. So she would like, like, like not acknowledge the black side. Okay. And I would. So, you know, I, I saw some things as I got older. Actually, one of my last jobs, I saw some things. One of my bosses said something and kind of looked at my, looked at him, I shook my head and going, wow, you racist jerk. But it is what it is. Can't change people that way. And w how did you see your parents deal with that? I really didn't. I really didn't see my parents deal with it at all. My parents were pretty much, they stayed in the house. We did send us outside. So if I had a problem, if I had to fight someone, I would fight somebody. That was basically about, well, change that. They told us to turn the other cheek to a point and said, start fighting back. Okay, I started fighting back. I got arrested. All right, stop fighting back. Well, make up your mind. Want me to fight or not fight? So. But did they ever have their relationship questioned or what I was told my mother, my grandfather, her father had more, had a bigger problem with my mom marrying a white guy than my dad's family from Iowa marrying a black lady. So the, the racing part was actually kind of reversed. Reversed. Interesting. And my grandfather was a Chicago cop and he was like, kind of questioned that at first. But he was cool with it. Um, my dad's side, come on in, Les. And it's, they don't see color over there. That's what they supper too. Everything has jello with it. <laughs> <laughs> she understands. Every, every meal has jello. <laughs> what advice would you give to people who are either dealing with a religion or with different ethnicities? Religion part? The religion is oh. hard because they have to actually live it. And they have to actually, it's almost like you have to realize that there's an issue there. Otherwise, you won't see it no matter how, what kind of talking to or help that people give you. you. There will always be a block there like I had. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about religion. Sweet. Okay. <laughs> now, I have a problem with religion. The biggest problem with religion is that why do you need someone to keep on reinforcing to be a good person? You should be doing it on your own. And you should do these certain actions just from yourself, not with the, some kind of like benefit of I'm going to die and go to heaven. Do we really know if heaven really exists? Is it really a hell? Make much of a difference? You know, it's like you're basically people are telling you what to do. I, you can't do because the God says going to show you if you do this. But why? Like, who is this God person? Why are you this person? It's like almost religion was created to control all the people. Once you do it this way, if not, this guy up in the, this, this guy in the clouds and come down and strike you down if you do things the way we tell you to do things. That kind of seems kind of controlling. So religion stuff is like just live your own life. What, was religion the the most difficult challenge that the two of you had growing up? No, no, in your marriage. No, but I think in the, at the beginning, very beginning, yes, at yes, the beginning, very beginning. because I had that hold, and I know? was like, and I, I don't want to do this, I and don't I was, do this. yeah, and so he was the bad person in my parents' eyes, and they were 
conveying that message to right. me and it was transferring to him and, and it, it kind of dictated. I had a plan. <laughs> right. My words and my action and my thinking. And that's where a lot of the arguments came. Uh, so I, what, what advice would you give to couples who may be in that position, right? Kind of struggling with maybe different religions, you know, having that, that difference of opinions. Don't force religion on your, on your mate. Please don't. Just don't question okay. on them. If they don't want, if they don't want to believe this, let them live their life. Though. They love you for you. We're not, and don't try to force this upon them because it's going to push them away farther. Mm-hmm. Like, don't try to control me. I'm, and you married me. your spouse, not your parents. <laughs> so your parents can just do whatever they want to do, say whatever, but don't let that get in the middle of you and your husband, especially if if you know that you still love each other and you're not there to hurt each other, but yet here's the external part of it, the parents, inserting and injecting their viewpoints and how you guys should yeah, work and do and work and live your lives and how sides. you should. You Her should side like, and my side doing the same, trying to tell us how to live our lives. Like, mm-hmm. wait a minute. We yeah. want, I want to live things. I don't live my life the way you live yours. I want to live my, my way. You guys are way too, too controlling and I want to raise my children so they, my children have a lot more options that other children should have. You, your high school, you're supposed to be the most, your teenage you're supposed to be the most exciting time of your life. You're supposed to learn things and stuff like that. But religion, you don't get that opportunity because they're telling you how you should live your life in the future. That's why people rebel because they see, they get out of the house and they see their eyes open up and say, wait, I can do this instead. This sounds a lot more, why can't I do this before? What's wrong with this? But I saw that as a younger child and I had this plan in my life on how to get out of it. <laughs> and you kind of put a stymie on that by telling your mom on me and my mom on me. <laughs> so last question. Oh, good <laughs> what is it that your partner does that you know they love you? He calls me up every time I'm out of town. He'll say, hi. He thinks of me. I'm he sure thought so. of me today without mm-hmm. me asking. That, that's just more like, uh, what do they call it? That's like instinct now. I'm getting coffee. <laughs> She's going to want coffee too. If I don't get coffee from her, I'm going to get yelled at. No, he knows me. <laughs> <laughs> she answers back. She asked me, do I want souvenirs from when she's out of town? I always tell her no. Most of the time I tell her no. It's more stuff. She responds back. And then at night, she'll come by and scratch my back. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way. <laughs> you need you need it scratch now, huh? <laughs> Well, Steve and Marty, we want to thank you so much for being on the podcast it's today. <laughs> it was too much fun. He's ready to go. <laughs> Everyone that doesn't right? want to do it. He was, yeah, we had to twist his arm to get on know. today. But <laughs> Steve must leave now. <laughs> no. We almost hear my message. I want to thank you so much for being on the podcast. It has been very enlightening for, for us and it'll be enlightening for our listeners as well. You know, for thousands of years, people have been sharing their stories to heal and to bond and to grow. We hope that by you guys sharing your story, it's enriched your lives and the lives of our listeners. For all you listening, please subscribe to our podcast and please leave us a review. If you have any questions, comments, or topic suggestions, please email us at contact at couplesynergy.com. For more information about Couple Synergy and our programs such as Relationship 101, the Couples Weekend Intensive, and our premier program called Couple to Couple, Look us up online at couplesynergy.com. And if you know anyone that can benefit from this topic, please share this episode. Until next time, synergize your life, synergize your love. You have been listening to Couple Synergy with Dr. Ray and Jean Kedkodian. Couple Synergy was recorded, edited, and produced by Dr. Ray and Jean Kedkodian. Voice over and music entitled Breathe and Let Go was recorded and composed by Gina Gonzalez. <laughs>